welcome to this week's episode of That Shakespeare Girl. Me and my cat, whose name is Dog, will be talking to you today about did Shakespeare use a quill pen? <laughs> question is yes, we think he did. The quill pen was a popular form of writing during Shakespeare's lifetime. And I thought when I started this episode that it was going to be a very short episode. I thought I would show up and say, well, yes, he did, and then be finished. And it turns out writing instruments in the 16th and 17th century is not at all that simple. So today we're going to explore one of the world's most famous writers, most famous, writing pen. The history of the pen starts out in ancient Roman times and they used a metal stylus to write by leaving marks on the paper. So the stick was really hard, like a piece of metal, right? And they would press on the papyrus and it would make marks that you could read. And so this was how writing started out. In her article for Finding Shakespeare, Dr. Stephanie Appleton writes about the history of the quill pen in an article that shares the quill pen that Shakespeare would have used doesn't look a lot like the traditional ones we're used to seeing in film and modern adaptations of Shakespeare. You can look at the Shakespeare cartoon image that we use here at That Shakespeare Girl, and it includes the stylized long feather quill pen that you might think of with Shakespeare. Turns out, Shakespeare's actual quill pen he would have used for writing looks a lot more like what you see in the movie Shakespeare in Love, where the quill pen is, has all of the feathers removed. They've been trimmed back, and so it's actually very smooth and looks not unlike what you would think of as a pencil today. So we know that Shakespeare used a quill pen, and of course we know that he was a writer, but did his quill pen get dipped in ink to write all of his plays the way that we think and the way that we show in movies? Or is it possible that his quill pen could have contained graphite? In 1565, when Shakespeare was one year old, we have a writer named Conrad Gessner who wrote a book on fossils. And he, in the book, he shows this picture of a writing instrument. And I don't have a copy of his picture, but it looked a lot like this picture. And he's quoted as saying, the stylus shown below is made for writing from a sort of lead, which I have heard the English call antimony, shaved to a point and inserted in a wooden handle. But the lead stylus, when you would use it, it would get your hand dirty and it required that you press down on the paper really hard. So society in general was looking for a better way to write. According to English lore, there were some shepherds out in a field and there was this fierce storm that overturned this tree. And when the tree toppled over, the roots were covered in this black substance and the shepherds didn't know what it was. But when they investigated, they found out that the material was really good for helping them mark their sheep, which as shepherds, they have to keep track of their sheep. And so they would mark the sheep with the substance. But the substance that the shepherds found was graphite and writing was the next step. They had actually uncovered a giant store of graphite in a place called Borrowdale, England. And at the time, this discovery of graphite was the only one in the world. And England actually held the monopoly on graphite and graphite pencils until the late 19th century. So is it possible that Shakespeare might have used a graphite pencil to write some of his plays or sonnets? It's obvious that writing with graphite was discovered and growing in fashion during his lifetime. Oh my goodness, it was an interesting question. So here's what I found out. The substance these shepherds discovered was misnamed lead because they thought it was a type of lead ore. And so they used the word plumbago because at the time they thought it was lead and this was the Latin word for lead. It wasn't until the end of the 16th century when Shakespeare would have been a teenager that the word pencil started to be used to describe a graphite writing instrument. 
it's a shortened form of the Latin word pensilis, which has been used since about the fifth century to describe instruments for marking on paper. Sometimes it's the word used to describe paintbrushes, other times it's used for writing instruments. At first the graphite was used for the marking of sheep, obviously, but then it was used in the production of cannonballs. And as deeply wrapped up in wars as the crown was at this time, they took a keen interest in the graphite's use for cannonballs and actually established the Company of the Mines Royal in 1564, which is when Shakespeare was born. They fiercely defended the contents of the mind, and Henry Petrosky writes in his book about the history of the pencil that much later, in March of 1752, King George II would actually establish a bill in the House of Commons specifically for the purpose of security at this mine, because apparently pilfering the graphite was common because graphite and graphite pencils was so popular. So what we know from this is that graphite was highly popular and well regarded for its value as a writing instrument by right around the time that Shakespeare was writing and in Shakespeare's backyard. England was the hub for graphite pencils. Surely Shakespeare would have known about the graphite pencil, but would he have used one? We know that pencils were created from borrowed graphite and that Borrowdale graphite was kind of like the brand name. It was the best superior quality graphite because by 1610, when Shakespeare would have been 46 years old and writing the play A Winter's Tale, black lead is recorded as being sold regularly on the streets of London as a writing instrument. And they would wrap it in different kinds of things. They would wrap it in string or twigs because holding the graphite got your hand dirty. So it was popular to write it. And to look at it, it looks a lot like what we think of as a pencil today. In 1609, then Johnson wrote his play Epicene. And in it, he quotes a box of mathematical tools as including his square, his compasses, his brass pens, and his black lead to draw maps. So Ben Johnson, Shakespeare's contemporary, is already referencing black lead as something used for drawing and writing. It gets even more interesting when we explore the 1771 version of the Encyclopedia Britannica, which defines pencils as including graphite, quote, enclosed in the barrel of a quill. Oh my goodness. And this is where I got really intrigued. And I thought, all of these pictures of Shakespeare writing with a quill, was he actually dipping the pen in ink and writing that way? Or did the quill itself contain graphite? And he was actually writing with a pen that's really, really similar to what we use today. Oh my goodness, I had to find out. This is where I am so surprised that I thought today's episode was going to be so short. And now it's actually gonna be a two-parter because I have reached out to the Folger Shakespeare Library as well as the Denwork Pencil Company, which actually sits on the site of the original Kenswick Pencil Company that was making pencils from the Borrowdale graphite in Shakespeare's time. As early as the late 16th century, Kenswick was making pencils. And they were really popular. People liked these pencils, especially clergymen and monks, which would take them and distribute them. Now, formally, exporting the pencils was kind of frowned upon. They didn't want you to do that, but it did get out and they were making a profit off of this. And the actual history and goings on, you have to piece it together. It's not very clear. So I've contacted both of these places and I've asked them to help me discover whether or not any of Shakespeare's writings would have been done with a graphite pencil. And I don't know about you, but if you guys teach Shakespeare like I do, it's going to be so exciting to be able to tell students that Shakespeare wrote with the same instruments we use today, or at least very, very similar ones. That's pretty exciting to me. So stay tuned. If you are interested in this topic and you want to find out if Shakespeare used a graphite quill pen when he was writing any of his plays, then stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out, and I'll be back next week with a follow-up to this after I hear back from the people I've reached out to to get some more direction on my research, and we will explore this further to see if we can find out whether or not Shakespeare would have used a graphite quill pen. Thank you so much for joining me this week at That Shakespeare Girl. I'm so glad that you're here. Don't forget to check out our membership community for even more goodies, and as always, please hit like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.